This podcast is brought to you by Body Armor. Drinkbodyarmor.com. Get your edge. Introducing Body Armor Edge. Sports hydration with a boost of caffeine. Here comes John Moran. Dribbles up into some full court pressure. He's quick. Judges. Well, we find the defense going coast to coast. One man to beat, and it's the big man. John leaps up. Oh, and hammer. With 100 milligrams of caffeine and 1,000 milligrams of electrolytes, there's no better way for John Morant to get his edge. It's more than a sports drink. It's Body Armor Edge. You're listening to EPPN's Today with DW. Welcome, everybody, to the Friday night edition of ADW. It is the pop culture edition with Mr. Lewis Perry from the Angry Geeks. What's going on, sir? I, I was doing my job. I was sharing. <laughs> on the Angry Geeks, we got a long intro. So I was have time to do the sharing, and I was... <laughs> That's okay. Dude, what's going on, brother? It's been so long, and I, know. I miss you. I miss you, too. I know. it's been. I haven't seen you in a long time. I know it's just been busy. It's just tough. I know. I mean, I've been on, dude. I've been like rocking and rolling. This has been crazy, and it's like from doing nothing live, well, in front of a live audience, and then all of a sudden, hey, can you be on the show with me? Hey, can you do a spot for me over here? Can you do this? And all of a sudden, it's like. Hey, can you show up here? Hey, can you show up there? It's crazy now, and I don't have time for anything. It's just no, freaking no. insane. Yeah, I mean, I feel the same way. You know the studio. I'm getting a little bit of feedback on your end. Um, but the, the studio has uh, been picking up, as you've seen on the post, so it's been a little tough to figure out what we're going to do with the show. You know, Hold not, on. Let me, I'll, I'll plug it. And there we have it. Uh, Lewis Perry is uh, <laughs> having a technical difficulties already. Well, you know what? He'll be back on soon, I'm sure. Uh, but again, like Lewis is saying, it's been a few weeks since uh, him and I have got together with him doing stuff, me doing stuff. Uh, both are this, my studio. And of course, uh, the Angry Geeks for him are growing. So it's been a little difficult for us to, uh, to figure out uh, times right now. So it's going to be tough. I'm not really sure. Uh, the Today with DW show is not going to go anywhere, but there's going to have to be some changes if I want to keep doing uh, Tuesday through Friday, especially to keep our advertisers, sponsors happy, and more importantly, you guys, uh, the listeners and the watchers. So I'm not really sure what's going to happen. Uh, the work schedule is going to be changing too as well by the end of this month. So there's going to be some major changes. I'm not sure. I may be forced to go back into the mornings um, just to try to keep schedules going and whatnot so hopefully uh, we'll be able to figure that out again it's friday uh usually i ask you know how you're doing if you missed last night's uh today with dw it was really fun uh, i had a special co-host caleb dingman who uh released his uh debut uh, song on our show last week um or two weeks ago i should say and yeah was it two weeks ago i think it was two weeks ago uh the fourth no not the fourth it was before the fourth um, but, uh, he got to, he got to come, uh, a lot of people were, uh, that ding means Lewis is here. Uh, welcome back, Lewis. Sorry about that. Yeah, you know, StreamYard did this twice where I plug in that set, boots you out. They even did that to one of our guests the other night. It's bizarre. I don't know what's going on with them. Turn your sound filter off. <laughs> your voice changer's still on. Well, <laughs> my God. What the hell? There, is that better? There you go. Yeah, there, there you go. What there. the hell? I don't. Uh, I got updates for my laptop, and I'm refusing it because I know right before I go live, if I update, there's going to be issues. Oh yeah. So I, I, I don't want to update, and I think that's as part of the problem. But let me get back to Streamyard for a second. Is whenever you plug in your headset, if you don't, if you run without a headset, then you plug it in, it boots you right off. It happened to our guest the other night, um, which, by the way, you're going to have the audio this evening. I just cut it and it wouldn't allow his camera. So the guy was on on camera with Jamie and I with no camera wouldn't allow it wouldn't take it. That's and then Jamie I and I were. Uh, 
yeah then another show jamie and i were talking uh we had dave schwartz on uh huge supporter of angry geeks uh confederate frankenstein i switched headsets because i blew out a channel mm-hmm had no audio jamie had to do like almost three quarters of the show without me bizarre yeah that's weird i haven't had that problem yet thank god yeah anyway like i was saying i, I miss your brother it's been a long time and we haven't even had chance to hook up and talk on the on the oh. telephone and uh no, yeah no. dude it's just crazy been things busy. are starting been busy yeah things are starting to cultivate things are just popping right now things are starting to grow it's it's, it's insane you, i'm happy you lucky about. bastards get to go to a con this year <laughs> one of us was. one well, uh, it's, it's doesn't cats matter. out of bag doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Uh, okay one of us Yee! One yeah, of I, know. Us. I know i know i know <laughs> yeah yeah already posted it anyway if anybody's seen it they already should know well yeah one of us is going to colorado comic con um but yeah and well one we all us. know it's <laughs> one of us uh, he, he, but it's it is true when the angry geeks uh, we're kind of like the sith there's always traveling too and one of us is not too far behind but yes yes uh congratulations to jamie dolan yes, oh my uh, sister from another mister your sister from another mister uh cosplay guest at colorado comic-con um the angry geeks we do travel in pairs um but yeah, time will tell. Time will tell. We'll see what happens. Yeah. And <laughs> so, speaking of that, uh, um, have you guys been able to go? Now we know alternate uh, reality. Um, obviously, uh, Colorado Con, Rhode Island Comic Con. Uh, they're still been they've been pushing their announcements even during uh, COVID. So it looks like yeah. they're going to be pretty well uh, with that. Um, so. Uh, what do you think about the rest of the now? No thumbs down on this. That's an inside joke. Now, Ming Chen is all again. Here we go. Ming Chen, the PR whore that he is, has mm -hmm. already done three cons. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I know. I, so, I, I'm assuming the fact that we will all start being coming back to cons. I think it's slowly but surely coming back. Um, have you mm -hmm. got, now have we heard anything more about any of the other alternate uh, reality cons coming out? I know. Um, in Colorado. Yeah, right now on the dockets for me to create uh, videos and so on and so forth is just Rhode Island and Colorado Comic Con. That's all I have on my docket working with the team that I work with. That's all I have. Um, I will be, um, well, not not just me, uh, Jamie and I in, in the coming weeks, um, I will be having someone or a pair from ARE, the ARE network mm -hmm. um, from Alternate Reality Entertainment live from uh, in live streaming live on the Angry Geek Show with Jamie and I in a couple weeks. Nice. nice. So um, they, they will hopefully be giving us some inside scoop. Right. And uh, nice. yeah, and they are, let's just say, the powers at B. They were on once before. They will be on again live. Uh, we will be fielding questions and we're going to lay down angry geeks guidelines for those comments and questions. Cause we will be live when they're on and right. uh, it's going to be way before Colorado comic con when they're on. And I know they've been bit busy people. Cause I talked oh, yeah. to both yeah. of them. Yeah. And uh, it's actually, I'm going to be seeing them too uh, live and in color and living person. Um, and it, just at the end of the month, okay. um, I'm, I'm going to be seeing them in person. I got to make, a trip down to the home of the angry geeks down to alternate universe. And uh, they're going to be there. Yeah. I got to make a day trip. And uh, well, the two of you better start coming up, thinking about coming up this way very soon. Damn it. Yes, I know. We got to do that. I mean, that's, this has been in the making prior to COVID. Oh, yeah. uh, we got to go hang out in the studio, hang out with you, go out to dinner. You guys are going to drink. I'm going to have water or iced tea. <laughs> and dude, I tell you what, I got to definitely due to the ankle injury. And then COVID, I've got, I used to weigh what I used to weigh, but I was, you know, everyone knows the way I was. Now, all of this went to here. I got to <laughs> lose this before I hit the stage, man. Right, I'm yeah. got to, I'm like, 
I, well, yeah, do some walking to the guy with the bum ankle. How's that gonna work? Mm -hmm. I'm like, you, you, Jamie was just talking about this the other day. She was picking me up off the floor. No, you right. were picking me up off the ground the last time we were together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, walking. Yeah, that's kind of out of the question. You and I you got should Lou, you should have Lou Ferrigno carry you around. There, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know I should. It's like. I got some new um, – the cat's out of the bag about the whole cosplay thing. I mean, everyone knows I got a new jacket. I got a new jacket being commissioned coming in. This one is absolutely killer. So I got, of course, the American flag one. I've got the blue and white one. I've got the red and yellow – a brand new red and yellow one being made. I got a new one coming in. This thing is off the hook. I'm absolutely nice. loving this one. I debuted the rainbow one kind of today. I don't know if you've seen it. Yep. And uh, I, I'm I, I'm thinking because it's me, you, you know. And I I, I talked to Jamie, I talked to Raymond Ramos, other people that do cosplay. And he said, if you if you cosplay, if you're gonna do something, do something that's you. And that's certainly something that I'm comfortable with. You, right. you know, I mean, I, I wear that crap every day. I do. So yeah, I think why you not? Do already, I think you wear it. Tomorrow. Yeah, ex exactly. So it's it's nothing. <laughs> the only thing that I wouldn't wear every day is a cowboy hat. But I'm kind of rocking that. I think so. Oh I just God. throw a different bandana. I'm rocking yeah. and rolling. There you go. There you go. It's, yeah. So anyway, so it's, hopefully it's cool. we'll see the con seasons, uh, or the cons coming back. I think everybody's itching. I think some people still might wait another entire whole year, but hopefully, from uh, what I've seen through uh, Ming's posts. Uh, those cons have been doing okay, so they're doing pretty good. Brian O'Halloran's back on the circuit again, so that's good to see. He's he's going to be in Colorado. Nice, very nice. Well, with Ernie, er, Ernie and Scott Schaffio going to be. It's a clerks reunion. Yeah, 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 and they. I think they're going to need someone that's comfortable with them guys to you um, actually. You think? Yeah, someone that's like they're comfortable with, and somebody that's worked with them a oh, bunch of times. Only Jamie's going, so it must be Jamie that's going to be doing. It. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe i don't know uh, i don't know <laughs> the wonder woman is going to be there i think she would be way out of her element i love you jamie but you have no idea how to handle brian o'halloran <laughs> no actually no that's not true that's yeah. not true because she every live show every angry geeks after dark show yeah, we've we been, have that's different that's different because i've been to those two no but, but i'm saying he always sits next to her so it's me the last time uh, okay yeah that's right that's right yeah, because Jamie was actually taking care of me to make sure I didn't yeah, fall holding down. You up. Yeah, holding yeah, you up. Um, uh, but Brian O'Hallen, if you haven't, uh, anybody listening, if you haven't seen him at any cons, I was I moderated one. Lewis has moderated one. More uh, than one. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, nine <laughs> times out of ten, you don't moderate Brian O'Hallen. No, he moderates me. <laughs> yeah, he moderates me. <laughs> yeah. So it's always a good time, though. I mean, it, it, but he you never know what to expect every time he comes out on a panel it's totally different than from what he was doing on another show on another panel of different kinds so you have no idea what music he's going to bring what's he going to do uh and i and i think people enjoy that even if you don't know who brian hallen is and you go to the panel by the end of the day or at, at you the know who panel, he is not even that they know who he is you're like i love this guy i mean he just makes it fun you know it, it, listen we talking about black dildos one day so i mean you know you never know what you're going to get <laughs> at, at a con with him so very so, very I, i'm glad true. to see i'm glad to see some of the normalcy come back in the con uh universe hopefully it'll it'll extend uh further and further uh we I, I do have to say um at colorado comic con yeah. uh at the end of this august photo ops masks are not required oh, if you good. saw their post if you saw their post yeah that is a plus man i'm i mean that's awesome. Well, you know what, that's going to be, I would be careful with this, saying that too, because what if your guest requires them? No, I, I know there was a post. Let, let me verify that. Hopefully I didn't misread that. So but again, you know, maybe let's say Brown and Helen, which he doesn't wear a mask, wanted to wear a mask. Then you kind of have to wear a mask. If you go to him, I would assume. Yeah, let, let me, let, let me, let me verify that. Hold on. Be scratch, scratch, scratch that record. Rewind the tape. <laughs> Rewind the tape here. So while let me, uh, while Lewis was gone, uh, I, like I said, we're not sure what we're going to do with the Today with DW show. We might have to move it to mornings somewhat. Lewis and I will talk about that. But again, both of us are getting very, very busy. Uh, oh, look at it, this. Look. It, what's that? That's Jamie Dolan. Jamie Dolan. 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 Yeah. That uh, one so one. both of us are getting busy. The studio is getting packed. with When it rains, it pours. I, I mean, I had four podcast meetings this week. It's getting I, – I doesn't sound – I'm not complaining if it sounds like I'm complaining. It's – kind of a little bit stressful 
I am excited about it, but I, I am stressed because I expected not this to, I didn't expect this to happen. So now it's, it's uh, a little concerning to see what I'm going to do because the today with DW show has been doing very, very, very well. And I don't want to give that up. And I know you guys enjoy the show as well. So we have to, we might have to take a full week off to kind of really elaborate on stuff. I know I've been taking days off here and there, but it, I got to keep the ball rolling. So we have to figure it out. So you guys don't keep missing episodes. Uh, Lewis, did you find it yet? No. So strike that comment. Okay. But we'll figure it out and we'll keep you up to date on that. We'll yeah, we will. Cause maybe I was dreaming. I don't know. But we'll keep you up to date on it. And if then it, that possibly is true, that's awesome. If not, I'm sure people will be fine with what they have to do and meet all the proper procedures and protocols. I'm sure. Yeah, as, may, as we go, things will change a little bit. And who knows? Because it, it's it is Friday. I get out of work at 10 a.m. in the morning, and I come home and I go to sleep. So maybe I was having a happy dream. Maybe. So it, it it's quite possible. So I don't want to get in trouble or anything. That's so right. it is it is. I'm looking at their photos. So it's quite possible that I was dreaming okay. that because we can. Oh yeah. Right here, that. right here. Uh, this just in Colorado spring comic con fan masks will not be required for photo ops this year, unless the guest requests it. I was not dreaming that I was not dreaming that it's right cool. here. Very okay. Cool. I was not dreaming that right there. All right. All right, cool. So, yeah, I'm not in trouble. I'm not going to get spanking. So, even though I would like it by certain people, I might, well, by my wife, I would like, never mind. Uh, It's a family show. No, (laughs) and it's a family show. So, yeah, I won't get in trouble. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, you've been watching Sweet Tooth? Uh, I watched, uh, that was going to be my Netflix pick for the week. Uh, Dude. I only watched watched a little bit of it so far. I'm Uh. Yeah, I haven't. I've been busy, brother. <laughs> Dude, what the hell? I even made time for that, and I, I got to tell you, Rose loves it, man. So it's a hit. It is. A hit. It's That's a. It's second week. We got one episode left, and we are done with the season. Yeah, and I'm yeah, telling you, I, I think I watched one episode and fell asleep. I'm not. I, I did enjoy it, so I'll catch. Are, you oh, okay, I'm <laughs> telling you, it. I'm watching all this other crap too, Lewis. I'm watching The Flash, which has kind of gone down the crapper a little bit in the last two episodes. Uh, Superman, I've been watching. Uh, what else have I been catching up on? Oh, the Bad Batch on Disney. I've been uh, catching up on. Yeah, I'm so all caught up with that. I'm, I'm I'm all caught up with that. Um, but like a lot. Sweet Tooth, man. I mean, I I downloaded the book on Comicsology because finding the back issues is just horrendous. Oh, and I I knew I I knew the book was hot when it came out. But I'm like, ah, 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 wasn't my forte. Didn't, didn't want to read it. Even though people said, dude, you really should check this book out. And I'm right. like, nah, nah. And the person telling me to read it was kind of, we all know what I had to live with. And I'm like, yeah, nope, yeah, yeah. that's okay. So I'm like, no, no, no. And I, he sh- I show me the front cover. And I'm like, no, definitely not. No. So don't judge a then, book by its cover, Lewis. Exactly. Exactly. So then. I see the the trailer and I'm like, wow, that looked pretty cool. So I downloaded the book in the com- uh, Comicsology. I, I want to read it. Time catches up with you and you can't read it. All of a sudden, it comes out last Friday and I said to Rose, I said, hey, we're going to eat dinner. I said, let's go eat in the living room, fire up the TV, let's watch this show. And she's like, well, all right, let's sit down and watch it. So we sat down. We watched three episodes last Friday alone. Mm, nice. She's like, this is really good. Nice. She goes, it's really cute, really good. She was digging it. Then she's sitting at work. And, of course, she works in the doctor's office. And patients are coming in talking about it. She goes, I didn't even know it was DC Comics. I thought it was Batman or Superman. And, <laughs> and of course, Rose is giggling. She's like, the general public really likes this. I'm like, right. it's friggin' It's it's awesome. They're doing the violence right. They're doing right. everything right. Plus, it hits home today with the pandemic that's going on or the epidemic and everything that's happening. I'm digging it, man. They all got do it. It's really, yeah, really. I, I like good. I like the first episode. I, I like the first episode a lot. I just got to get back. Like I said, I got other crap that I've been watching. Uh, yeah, crap! I man, I just started watching Avengers again for some reason. Avengers, dude, like- me too. Me too. I like an end game. I don't know why, but I'm like, I, I watched a couple weeks ago. I watched, um, I watched, um, 
Infinity War and Endgame. I watched them both. It just like my, my back in my head, something was itching. Like watch it, watch it. So I yeah. did. I watched them both, oh, and then I also the... go ahead. I also ended up watching Ragnarok and Doctor Strange again for some reason. Nice. Uh, also, my Netflix pick of the week will also be Loki. The very first episode came out on Wednesday. <laughs> that was amazing, amazing, amazing. Yeah, that's why we we would have finished. Sweet Tooth last night, but right. I watched Loki on Wednesday night, which is another thing I wanted to talk to you about. That's awesome. Did you what? What did you think? I thought it was great. Dude, I I, I the really Easter I mean, the Easter eggs in there. Uh, Agent Carter. I'm sorry if I'm spoiling it, but supposedly she's the one that made an appearance through there uh, through one of the time portals. Um, it's going to be an interesting take to see what happens. I mean, and it might've been why I started watching infinity war because they're doing flashbacks from New York city and they're doing all this stuff and how funny that, you know, uh, well, the whole end, the whole end of end game was like almost the beginning of Loki, you you know, it it, it was, what did you think when they open up the draw and there was multiple infinity stone, it was like, open up your junk draw in your house and you find like all these, extra straws and nuts and bolts and everything and the guy opens up spoiler sorry i'm, I'm sorry if you guys are watching but they he opens up the junk draw or the evidence draw and there was nothing but infinity stones and look he's like do you know what those are and he goes yeah we use them for paperweights i'm like what the hell because so no, i mean magic doesn't work magic doesn't work there the stones don't work there yeah the tesseract doesn't work right. so is this a way that they could bring back possibly Tony, no, and it Steve break Rogers. No, because it would they would break the time on. continuum. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, maybe I then they, they can reconstruct the MCU with them. But then again, they would also bring back Thanos. So it's it's yeah, yeah so, it's a double edged. You know, the bad things are already supposed to happen because, as they said, that's the way it's supposed to happen. You know, so I'm Cor- they're not going to bring correct. them back. Um, I'm hoping that if anything, I hope we get if we're going to see that the the. the uh, the um the what, what do you want to i forgot the name of the actual what is the time so whatever the time association i forgot the name of the tva name. tva uh if we see tva i wonder if we get to see a watcher i want to see this tie into the uh external or the um eternals and kind of maybe even you know give a brief glimpse of him so could when what if comes out because that's all about the watcher itself but even though that's am- animated but yeah. I would love to see that. And I'd love to see if we actually see the three Time Lords, the three lizard people. as Kang. Yeah, Kang. Are we going to get Kang? Well, that's what I, I mean. That's yeah. what I would assume that we're going to see because uh, I'm not going to spoil it because uh, they're searching for a guy who's killing everybody at the TVA. I thought it was going to be Kang. Obviously, it's not. But well, again, I don't know 100% either because Kang is supposedly either a part of being one of the big baddies in the next phase and possibly part of the next Ant-Man movie. So I, you know, Mm -hmm. I would be, wouldn't surprise me if they tied him in because right now Wanda vision and winter soldier had tied everything together so far. All right. Uh, Again, no spoilers. um, But the little girl in the beginning of the church pointed to the devil. So immediately my mind, (gasps) Mephisto. Oh my God. It's Mephisto. But then they said it was Loki. So does that mean Loki is Mephisto? What the hell is going on? Because the little girl did point. Right. Now, we all know Mo- Loki is the god of mischief. He can right. shapeshift. Did right. he shapeshift into Mephisto when he killed whoever it was in the church? Because right. they did say the killer was Loki, and they needed Loki to catch himself. Now you just spoiled it. Oh. You said Rewind no the tape. Rewind the <laughs> There you go. Wow. Wow. Lewis. Wow. Sorry. Holy Sorry. God. My bad. Please send your hate <laughs> meal. <laughs> go to the go to the new and approved Angry Geeks website and click that button that says contact us. Underneath there, you're gonna say you're gonna see a thing that says management. That's Jamie Dolan. Email her. <laughs> well, anyway, wait, wait to spoil it. But hey, why don't we just keep Dude, going? I didn't mean to do that. I forgot we were live. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <dude. laughs> uh, so anyway, let's keep talking about some uh, streaming news. Uh, we're going to keep it in the Marvel U. One of my favorite all-time characters. No, I'm not talking about Moon Knight, but we're talking about Spider-Man 2099. Miguel O'Hara. I thought you were talking about the Punisher. And that's not my favorite. Pu- that's not my favorite oh, character. Well, but he's one of mine because he's going to be in Moon Knight. Yes, I know. 
But that's where I thought we were going. No, no, because Punisher's not my not my favorite. Sorry, Berthal. Sorry, John. I saw him the but, other weekend, by the way. Uh, I know so you I, told me. So anyway, Spider Man 2099 TV show reportedly coming to Disney Plus. Now, obviously, I loved uh, Spider Man Into the uh, Spider Verse, which I thought was great. It won a couple of Oscars. I thought it was very well done. There is going to be a sequel with that, and obviously, at the very end, Bologna or hot dogs. <sighs> what are you talking about? What you just said. I said I like Spider Man in that. Yeah. No, I, you said it won a couple of Oscars. Did it win the Bologna or the hot dogs? I'm just wondering. Oscar Meyer. Oh. Uh, oh, maybe, you mean the trophy? Maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe oh. got a maybe got a hot dog and a slice of bologna. Who knows? Okay. Uh, file that joke right in the garbage can, Lewis. Uh, so I'm talking, about, I'm, I'm talking about Spider Man 29, <laughs> aka Miguel O'Hare. Fortunately, I didn't have to wait too long to get my wish because guess what? Last minute appearance during the credits, as I said, I thought that was amazing. So obviously he is going to be part of. Uh, pardon the pun. I see what you did there. Yeah, uh, he's going to be. <laughs> he's going to be. He's going to be part of uh, Spider uh, Spider Man in the Spider Verse, uh, the sequel part two. I don't know what they're going to call it, uh, but now I think we're going to see uh, the fact that we're hearing that things might be looking up for the character too. It's being reported that Sony Pictures and Disney are joining forces to give him his own Disney Plus show. The rumor comes via bounding one of our sources that we've had before, a Mikey Sutton, which by the way has not been wrong uh, lately. I mean, for the last couple of years, I don't know where he's getting his tips or what, but we've used him. I've used him on some other articles and he's pretty much been dead on about this. Now, this is not 100% confirmed, but we're going to put it out here and we'll just say it's a rumor. But like I said, he's been nailing it on the head with all these speculations. If you're not familiar with the concept here, how Spidey 29 works in 1992, which by the way, is probably one of their better launches i think of alternate realities and universes the new uh, jim shooter's new universe sadly did not do very well this is the only book that did uh no well that's a different one uh but the new universe no, uh, was star brand was Sci oh okay Hot. that one yeah, no star different. brand was the only book that was star yeah. star brand was the only book that was worth anything i mean you I, had side force I did like Cyforce. I thought that was a cool concept as well. Well, it, it, it was it was good. It was supposed to be the new. And we'll we'll get to your point, then yeah, we'll go back to the new universe. How about anyway, that? Marvel launched their twenty ninety nine comics line, like I said in nineteen ninety two. Imagine what their iconic heroes might be into the future. There was Fantastic Four twenty ninety nine, which sucked. Hulk mm -hmm. twenty ninety nine, which was okay. Uh, X Men twenty ninety nine, it was uh, it was okay. Uh, Doom twenty ninety nine was okay. Then there was Ravage. And then there was a Punisher. Uh, uh, yep, uh, Ravage, uh, which our our friend uh, Joe Saint Pierre did a few things with. He also did Spider Man twenty ninety nine, by the way, uh, for a few issues of that as well. Um, so I think it, I think it'd be a nice uh, transition transition to see a twenty ninety nine. Obviously, with the Spider Verse coming into play. Um, by far the most successful of the books was Spider Man twenty ninety nine, a cyberpunk cyberpunk thrill set in new. Nueva York, Nueva York, yeah, featuring a ge Genesis who had half his DNA overwritten uh, with that of a spider. In addition to the typical spider power, he extremely sensitive hearing and vision, razor sharp talons in, in his fingers and toes that allowed him to wall climb, venom glands in his fanged teeth. Uh, the concept proved so popular that when Marvel resurrected the 2099 range last year, Spider Man 2099 was front and center. Of course, it would be. Uh, Sony toyed with the idea of animated Spider-Man 2099 in 1999, but that just went nowhere. Uh, it included it to the end to similar to Batman Beyond, and it never got past the planning stage. Um, so I'm excited for this. I Like I said, our source, Mike uh, City, has been pretty good with this speculation. Um, since Sony's been playing nice with Marvel, uh, obviously they are going to be playing nice for a while because they're making a ton of money off this uh as far as what's going on hey timmy what's going on nice to have you with us uh, Timmy. so i would be excited this would be exciting for this property now because of disney plus and all of the um you know winter soldier uh wandavision loki and then we are trying and obviously spider-man is in the mcu will mm -hmm. we see mm -hmm. a t would we see somewhere that's possibly that Miguel could be brought into New York City for some reason or trapped through a portal and become part of the MCU? It's possible because of uh, Multiverse Madness with Doctor Strange because mm -hmm. Doctor Strange is supposed to straighten out all this bull crap that happened in Far From Home. Right, right. Which you know, true. and fix. And we just and heard, we, I just heard the article today too, 
old man Logan gonna be in Doctor Strange. So uh-huh. they're really pulling out all the strings. Snicky, here. Snicky, Wolverine, baby. Yeah. I, so I, it's um. Go ahead. It's it's possible. Doctor, see, Doctor Strange is our segue to bring back even Steve Rogers and Tony Stark. Doctor Strange could do a lot, which also makes me sad because the rumors, or not the rumors, the comic book that's coming out soon, the death of Doctor Strange, kind of makes me sad. But then again, everybody dies in comics and then they come back. Um, so I, I definitely want to pick that book out. Chris Evans has has made it known that yes, he would come back, but really doesn't want to come back. He really has made it quite adamant that he does not want to come back as Captain America. Now, the Tony second Stark, they say, what's that? The second they say, hey, Chris Evans, yo, we want to do a movie with you and Hugh Jackman as Wolverine and Captain America. Here is a boatload, and we mean a yacht, the love boat style, the Pacific Princess, full of money, full to the brim, from bow to stern. Oh. I guess that's the boat terminology, all the way up to the stack. Okay. Full of money. It's all yours. Would you be Captain America? You know what he's going to say? Where's the shield? That's what he's going to say. Come on now. I I don't think either him or Robert Downey need any more money. Let's be honest. Oh, yes, they do. Robert Downey Downey would say... A little oh. boy in a, a little boy or girl in a wheelchair will go up to Robert Downey Jr. and say, please, sir, just one more. And Robert Downey Jr. would say, no, no, for you, anything. He's already yes. said that he wants to come back. And I yeah, don't think it'll course. be mainstream. I think it'll be an alternate universe version of it somehow. I don't. The, they'll again, do. Don't they'll, they'll be back. Never say never. Never I say never. The next round of Avengers are going to be all women. Well, think about, right, think about this. Think about this. Seriously, think about this. Michael Keaton said he will never be Batman again. Guess what? John Wesley Shipp, good friend of the Angry Geeks, said he would never wear a Flash suit again. He did. And he also said he would never be the Flash again. He was. Yeah, but never. You're talking about a big major amount of money between the two of them compared to Robert and Chris Evans. I mean, the I, 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 so money. what? So what? You, you just you just contradict what you said. No, a didn't. big major amount of money. Yeah. Because, never say never. John Wesley and Michael Keaton needed money. Robert Downey and Evans don't need money. They, oh, their careers come. are not as hot. Poppycock. Not, you know damn well they're not as hot. You know oh. damn well they're not hot. Don't I, I'm on. just saying. John, I'm John, just... John's a good friend of mine too. I know. Sorry, Mister Ship, but and even Michael Keaton's career is not. Yes, he's got a lot of money too. But Robert Downey and Chris Evans are worth more than that. And and Chris wants to be a producer now. Um, I know, again, but I'm just... I, I agree with you. I I mean, everybody's got their own price. Um, I just don't see this happening. But a million soon. dollar man. I just don't see this any happening anytime soon. I feel that okay. either the, the new Avengers are going to be. No pun intended, because there's a thing called New Avengers. They're going to either be all women, like there was before. It, they're setting it up pretty good. We got the She-Hulk coming. We got yeah. We got yep. oh, Pulse. I got the action figure. We got Pulse, who was in uh, WandaVision. We got Captain yep. Marvel. Yep. Uh, we can bring in Rogue if we have to. It's a great way to introduce, you know, Ooh, yeah, uh, uh, really X-Men in this. Or the real New Avengers are the children of the original Avengers. Now that's not mm-hmm. far off the possibility either. Uh, to maybe bring them back to save the original Avengers from somebody or some of the original Avengers, um, or it's in the far future. I mean, right now, we really don't know. We know the major baddie is a nightmare for Doctor Strange, but we really don't know how much the quantum realm is going to work. Uh, obviously, we know Wanda. Uh, Wanda Ooh, wouldn't it be cool if it was the maestro? I think that would confuse people, but yeah, that would be kind of cool. Oh, that would be awesome. But uh, and we have some we do have some Dr. Banner news as well, too, coming up. Um, So, you know, Wanda is also going using the dark hold. So she's going through the multiverse. She's traveling all over the place. So we're not sure exactly what's going to be entailed here. Obviously, it's going to be nightmare. It's going to be you're going to be facing your fears and whatnot. But we've we've seen all these cameos. So there's it's got to be time travel, alternate reality. You, You know what I say, to be honest with you? I say let's just sit back, wait. Oh yeah, but and still. get ready to enjoy it. That's that's. I mean, I that's like what. Waiting too, though. I mean, I I, I know. I I have fun. Uh, to be honest with you, brother, I I have fun speculating too. But I think it's more fun. We had more fun back in the seventies and eighties 
waiting. I mean, we, when we did get the little tidbits out of Starlog and Time Magazine or Entertainment Weekly, when we got those little tidbits or the Inquirer once in a while would put something, it was like, oh, or that's Hollywood. Remember that TV show we used to have? That's Hollywood. They would throw, throw a little thing. We were like, it was like a present from Santa Claus. We were happy. See, I want to give presents to people, so we're we're, we're like the presents. <laughs> <laughs> but we I mean, like no we presents. we we were happy. But the, today, today you got like, to, you got the rag sheets today. They're like, oh, this just in, and like, dude, I, I wish let's let's just treat it like we were back then. Even even with wrestling, this is. Right. Get surprised. Let's sit back and enjoy it. Oh, I'm still gonna. And I bet you we would. I bet you we would enjoy things so much better. Oh yeah. If we were all, yeah. If we were all just quiet, sat back and watched it without any spoilers or without any. And this guy's gonna do this, and then oh, this is. If we just sat back and enjoyed it, my God, you imagine what our world would be. And the I don't mean the entire world. I mean the geek world, the geek population. The man who just said no spoilers and just spoiled Loki right off the bat. Well, no, I didn't mean it. that way. I mean, I mean, screw that shit. Once it comes out, yeah, talk your ass off about it. I'm talking about before it comes out. Once you see it, the gloves are off, man. It came out two days ago. Give it, give, give it I, I mean, you, to- once you walk out of the theater, like, would you believe that Darth Vader was Luke's father? And people in the... <laughs> What the dad? Quiet! No, 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 no! Don't worry about that. Once you see it, talk oh, about no. it. You got to have some respect a little bit for some people. Walk out of the theater. Mickey died tonight. right in Rocky's arms. I can't believe that. I cried. Oh, what? Well, we, got some more, we got some more news before we take a break. Bruce Banner will reportedly become a savage and more powerful Hulk in the MCU soon. Now, there has been debate going on why they're the Maestro. Out- Hold on now. Don't be speculating now. You just sit down and enjoy it, Lewis. You know, no, I know it. I know what it is. I've seen it. Um, so there's been a lot of speculation because Marvel does not own the Hulk, and you and you're gonna be like, huh? He does huh? not, he's not owned by the Hulk. It is he's owned by Universal. Um, they have the thing is that works out with them is that they handle all the distribution rights. They deal with all the back end kind of stuff. So there that's why there has not been a solo deal. But I do believe since Universal has seen Marvel work with Sony so well, this is, could be a possible chance. Again, this might not even be until phase five, but it's it's good to start seeing positive stuff. Mark Ruffalo's uh, Bruce Banner has been hugely popular and integral part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe ever since he took over from Edward Norton and made his debut. By the way, I do like Ruffalo, but I really did love Edward Norton as Dr. Banner. I really thought mm-hmm. he captured the character great. He was skinny. Uh, I thought he did a great job. Unfortunately, he turned out to be a greedy SUB and decided that he, he was bigger than everybody else and wanted too much money. But ha, you should have taken what Robert Downey did and then you would even be richer. But anyway, there's a sneaky suspicion that the franchise might be running out of things to do with him. Uh, we've seen the giant green rage monster tear a path through the Chachari while he ultimately abandoned Abandoned arc with Scarlett, Johan- uh, Scarlett jo- Johansson's Black Widow and Age of Ultron and beyond that felt like a half-hearted stab at an emotional development but before uh, in Thor Ragnarok made him the belligerent bel- straight man to Chris Helmsworth's charismatic tour de force. I know him from work. <laughs> so where, do we, where does it go from here? Well, if a new report is to believe that the Hulk could be returning to his roots in the future with plans said to be in place for a more savage and powerful version of what's more recently become a pretty jolly green giant, which he has because, what is it, Professor Hulk is what was his last, uh, his last incarnation. Unfortunately, yep. there's not much in the way of their further details, but upcoming Disney Plus series She-Hulk, will, with She-Hulk series will have Mark Ruffalo in there. So Ooh. that's already been said that, that Mark Ruffalo will be there. So we'll know that I'll have a much better idea where he's heading once the show draws to a close. Finally, the rumor is predicted on the notion of Hulk versus Wolverine, which is something that, <laughs> how funny you were talking about that. Now we're all Wolverine versus, uh, uh, and Captain America. Hulk, yeah. versus, Hulk versus Wolverine movie happening along the introduction of Amadeus Cho, both of which I've heavily speculated upon, but aren't anywhere close to being confirmed. Now, uh, I, you know, it's funny the way the last Hulk's movies have been. I, like I said, Edward Norton was good. Hulk's character, Rogue, Rogue's Gallery has never been the best, I guess you might say. It's always Gamma related. 
Um, if anything, I would rather see the leader and then bring in supporting characters like Doc Savage, or not Doc Savage, Doc Samson, uh, mm -hmm. some other supporting characters. Maybe bring in, you know, an Avenger just to, you know, just to kind of sidekick it out a little bit. Um, but again, his, his having a solo movie for him would be tough. The only way that I could see it going very well would be a Planet Hulk. And that would be huge. That would be totally huge. Um, that would involve the Avengers. That would involve almost now pretty much almost everybody in the, Mar in the Marvel Cinematic Universe to a point. Or in the comic book universe now that we have but, the Fantastic Four and the X-Men. Yeah, but Planet Hulk, we kind of already did that with Ragnarok. Yeah, but we yeah, didn't because yeah, yeah. yeah but kind of, but no. I mean, again, we did, what about Scar? There's a yeah, there's a new thing. True, Scar true. is being Scar is being introduced. You're hearing him yeah. first, being introduced on She-Hulk. So something weird's got to be going on with that. So again, is Doctor Strange really tidying up things, or are they going to pull the DC crap and have multiple universes and planets and everything else going on that they're going to get out of control? Because you you can't have Scar without Planet Hulk. So, True. you know, I don't know. And you did, you're right. They did a little bit of it in Ragnarok. Not even Yeah, because Korg but... was in it. Kor Korg was in it. And Korg was a part of Hulk's army in Planet Hulk. You, you I, know? But we and didn't, we didn't see, but we, we didn't see how long he was there. We didn't see, you know, Ragnarok could have been the end of Planet Hulk. You know, we're at the end all of a sudden, then it kind of ties right into Ragnarok. Well, now he's home. You know, we don't see how long he's been there battling and whatnot. We don't know. You know, they could always change it up. But again, I think with the introduction of Scar now, we got to see something from that. There's got to be some type of hint or something like that. You know, so who knows? I mean, I, I like this. I, you know, as far as having multiple Hulks uh, as well, that was another rumor as well. Um, I'm not ready for uh, a Red Hulk. I'm not ready for any other Hulks yet. I think they really need to establish this character a little bit more uh, than trying to do that. I mean, obviously, we know who uh, the Red Hulk is. General Ross, but yep. I, I just don't think I'm ready for that. I got his first appearance. Nice, nice. <laughs> I found nice. it for fifty cent. <laughs> nice. The well, boss was with me too, Eric Yako. He was with nice. me, and he looked at. I snagged it before him, and he just gave me a dirty look. I'm like, you snooze. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, on that bombshell, <laughs> we're gonna take a break, and when we return, we're gonna talk a little He Man. <gasps> Friday Fabulous Five, and hopefully we'll be able to get in. We might not even be able to get. We might try to get in some. No, we we mind. can't because I don't have anything. I packed everything up, oh. sent it upstairs to the attic. Go. But I am going hunting this weekend. I'm going there hunting this go. weekend. There you go, fans. Lewis doesn't care about you. He packed. Yes, post. I do. I have been on vacation for five weeks. Everybody, thank you, uh, and we'll be right back. Introducing Body Armor Edge Sports Hydration with the boost of caffeine. Kyler Murray drops back, looks downfield. Here comes the blitz. Murray finds an opening. And oh, not nine guys, and he misses. He's got daylight. Murray sprinting, picking up speed. With 100 milligrams of caffeine and 1,000 milligrams of electrolytes, there's no better way for Kyler Murray to get his edge. It's more than a sports drink. It's body armor. Edge. Welcome back to the Friday Night Edition of Today We Did It. It's the Pop Culture Edition. Mr. Joe Gillard, how are you, sir? Thank you for joining us. What's happening, Joe? Love you, you, brother. If you missed uh, the first half of the show, tough shit. <laughs> you get to watch first it. First half, back. first three quarters. What are you talking about? Oh, we're going all night, baby. Anyway. I Joe, can't. I gotta, I'm guesting I, on I another show at 9 o'clock. I know. I know. Hold on now. Okay. Uh, calm down. So, uh. Before we go into uh, this uh, this next uh, uh, topic, we're gonna we're gonna play all right, this all right, all right. and uh, we're gonna play this and let's hope that YouTube doesn't give me any crap. Probably. Time after time, you try to take this castle, but you will never succeed, Skeletor. Call your champion.
See, dude, I, I like the way it says after 40 years because, like, they're erasing those two crappy He-Man cartoons that we had. Even though the oh, art in that one was good, but the other one was crappy. Um, no, so hold I, on. They're not. Hold on. No. Uh, uh, build as both a continuation of the original animated series and a more fleshed out, mature reimagining. So they're not getting rid of the first two. So they are. It is uh, Kevin Smith. who This might be the first film that or Kevin, anything that Kevin does that everybody likes. <laughs> I know. I, I know. In part, <laughs> in part one, July 21st, oh, right? Yeah, July 21st. I know, dude. Yeah, uh, part really one. This brings together one heck of an impressive voice cast, which again, Mark Hamill steals the so show as Skeletor. Yeah. Again, oh, awesome. Uh, who else? Dude, I'm, I'm digging. I'm digging the way Oracle looks. The whole oh, dome yeah. part of the face. Everything. I think the artwork is amazing. The, the animation is amazing. Uh, Super, Supergirl's Chris Wood voices Prince Adam of Eternia. Well, as I said, Mark Hamill as his nemesis Skeletor. Uh, Sarah Michelle Geller, uh, Alicia Silverstone, Lena Haiti, uh, Dieck Batter, and Kevin Conroy among the other icons on board. And I'm like, holy crap. And yes, Smith's pal Jason Muse is in it too, voicing mm-hmm. Stinkar. Stinkor. Of Stinkor. course. Of course. Stinkor. Yeah, Stinkor. Uh, of course, he's Stinkor. Hamill's turn as Skeletor with the Joker icon, adding another legendary animated villain to his resume. Will Smith boldly, with Smith boldly comparing it to Star Wars and Marvel, will Masters of the Universe Revelation looks set to blow the internet's collective mind when it releases the first half of its debut season on Netflix in about six weeks' time, which is on July twenty. I, I think it's gonna break Netflix. I think so too. I I think it's gonna break Netflix the way. Um, the Mandalorian and Falcon in the Winter Soldier broke Disney. Mm, yeah, to be honest that, with you, yeah. it, it's gonna crash. It's and, gonna and crash. And so if it's good. If it's good, I'm hoping because now there's uh, who just came off of a movie uh, crap, who is in uh, talks and in production to do a live action <clears throat> Thundercats. Now, two- Ooh, Jason yeah, Momoa. Uh, um, I forgot who it was. It was he's just coming off a major movie. It's not Zack Snyder. It, uh, it, yeah, uh, no, Zack Snyder was like he wants to do uh, some kind of anime. I yeah, thought yeah. I forget what what it, what but it anyway, was. But so it's going to be a, obviously a CGI live action type type of movie. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But if the success of He Man, but again, two of my iconic cartoons in my childhood by far. Uh, if we could get an uh, a more mature adult version of Thundercats in an animated series, I'm all over it. I mean, does that, that mean Cheetah crazy. still got Cheetara still gonna be naked? naked? <laughs> she may be. <laughs> <laughs> they were all naked in the first yeah. episode. I was like, "Sun's going on here," especially with yeah, Chitara yeah. walking in in a room with little Lionel with naked. That was yeah, messed right? up. Yeah, then when they all got older, they were like, put some clothes on. That, that was. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, jokingly, this might be the first project uh, that Kevin Smith does that everybody enjoys. So hopefully uh, we can see. More I, of that. When I saw, I, I watched that when the trailer got released, um, fans of the Angry Geeks, they were sending it to me. And now I, I got to spring this. I'm going to spring this on you because um, I haven't sprung it on Jamie yet. We're getting emails and we're getting messages to do a entire episode about Masters of the Universe. Now, Jamie is a huge fan. Not many well, diehard Angry Geeks fans know this, but Jamie had all of the Shira toys. And she, this is, I'm going into Jamie's personal life here. When she was little, she had all the Shira uh, toys. A, a little boy down the street for her had all the He Man toys, and they used to play together. Nice, so nice. she, she knows her stuff. And people, diehard Angry Geeks fans know this. And they're sending, you guys have to do this. You have to do this before the show comes out. So I'm going to talk to Jamie, see if we can get it on the docket. Maybe we'll get Chris Campana on the show, who is a huge Masters of the Universe fan, a a fantastic uh, Master Universe artist. And maybe we'll make it happen, you you know? Um, I I loved the the teaser for that. Uh, Bonnie Wright. Her music, perfect. We need a hero. I loved the, I, I forget the name of the horse that you saw He-Man riding. Uh, oh, yeah, the yeah. horse the horse was half bionic, half horse. That's what you see him riding. Um, I'm digging it. I Damn really man. like it. Um, I love Skeletor's staff with all the skulls coming out of it. Um, 
I, I can't wait. I, I, I really, I, I like the art and you're seeing He-Man's total strength. You know, when that catapult comes forward and he just grabs it and smiles, I'm like, that's the He-Man from the, from the comics that right. we got with each toy that we got. That, right. that was, that's the He-Man. So now I'm also wondering, are He-Man and Skeletor going to be brothers? Cause that's what they were in the comics. You know, right. not the comics, not the comics, excuse me. And the little paperback books that came they, they they were brothers what's this i can't, I can't wait I, I i can't wait for this cartoon it's gonna be amazing you said earlier just sit back and wait and watch i, I know i know i know i mean uh, i wasn't i wasn't scouring the internet for anything on yeah. this i didn't want to see what they look like but the second the teaser the trailer because you know that came across the screen yes right. i'm gonna watch the teaser trailer because that's what we did back in the day so hey i'm gonna watch it and I, i'm digging it I am too. I can't wait. July 23rd, everyone. It's going to be fun. So I know we're going to get we're, towards the end of the show. We always like to put in a segment brought to you by one of our awesome friends and sponsors and uh, I, I guess home sponsor, of the angry geeks yeah, uh, and friends of uh, the earplug podcast network, uh, alternate universe, comic books and collectibles. We are doing the fat F- Friday, fabulous five every week. It changes something with that. It's the Friday five, but I always put in another F word in there. He, so, he uh, sent me last week's green lantern and I was supposed to read it. Cause I sent the boy down. Well, actually the boy went down by himself with him and uh, the two boys actually went down and they picked up the green lantern. And so I ha- I, I have that up here. Eric sent it up to me. Um, right. I did not get a chance to read it yet. All right. Well, we're going to start off now. The the Friday Fabulous Five are the five picks that Eric Yako picks himself uh, just for your suggested reading. And what I like about what's going on, too, Eric is really, I think, I don't know if he's doing it on purpose, but he's really picking out number ones, not number mm-hmm. 340s. He's really making it easy for you to be like, you know what? This is a series that you need to jump on and, and get on board quick. Where if you were getting Spider-Man 448, you're like, crap, that's midway through the arc. Now, we probably will get some of those because if the story arc is that important or the, the, the book is that good, then that's coming from Eric's own personal recommendation. So this is coming from the bottom. Absolutely. Itself. So we are going to start right off with the first one, as you can see here. It is Secret Land number one coming from Dark Horse Comics. Hitler's dead. Ben and Catherine are supposed to be together happy instead. Ben fights the war in the Pacific with the reckless heroism of one who believes his fiance killed in action. Yet Catherine lives undercover and about to arrive at the Third Reich's last bastion. Something is waiting for her there for all of them, and it's hungry. Cosmic horror from the creators of Whisper, Whispering Dark. So we're getting a little time period piece here, which I think is pretty cool. Um, I, th- what I like about these is cause I, I haven't been in the comic, the, the new comic book game in a good year or so, uh, Lewis and I've been buying a lot of back issues and getting that. So seeing stuff like this kind of gets my juices flowing going, you know what? That's not a Cape and cowl book. Cause I, yeah. you know, I like my Cape and cowls, but you know, dark horse, uh, image put out some great non Cape and cowl books. This looks interesting. I'd like to see how this plays out. And again, this is the number one. So, and it came out this week. So it's something to grab, get on board with. Uh, we're going to go right into, uh, number two. Ooh, yes. I'm hearing big deals about this. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. No, I just said mostly number ones, but this is ant. This is number 12. This is coming from, uh, image, uh, and also Eric Larson. Uh, if you don't know Eric Larson, Google him. Cause we could talk an hour, an hour, an hour Spider-Man hour. savage dragon. Oh yeah. So this is a, uh, this is the end of a story arc. So this is why, okay. So you get the first 12 issues. So, this, so uh, the answer 14 years after the previous issue was published Ant returns for Valiant from volume one's awe-inspiring conclusion, the special one shot. Okay. There you go. Both wraps up the story had already begun by a series creator, Mario Gully and serves as a completely self-contained introduction to Ant by superstar creator, Eric Larson. Hannah Washington has spent years looking for answers, and finally her quest comes to an epic conclusion, guest starring the dynamic Daredevil. Now, that's not Daredevil from Marvel. Um, So there you go. Again, another great self-contained book, so you don't have to worry about it. Now, you can go back, I guess, and get some of the older issues if you wanted to uh, from a story arc from years ago. But again, another great selection that Eric has picked, and 
uh, it's, you can just get it as self-contained. And I already love the artwork. Coming up, my, my personal favorite. Now, people used to pick on me. Uh, now, there's been different renditions of this web of Spider-Man. Uh, I have the very first uh, very first run of Web of Spider-Man, and that was when he was in his black suit. Um, and I thought that series was very w well done. And then there's been a couple other ones. <clears throat> Excuse me, a couple other ones. This, this didn't really pan out. Uh, but uh, Web of Spider-Man number one, obviously, is Marvel Comics. Peter Parker, Spider-Man scientist or troublemaker. Thanks to none other than Tony Stark, a new scientific research station for the teenage heroes of the Marvel Universe has just been completed. So just to give you a little bit of background, Marvel's in a whole upheaval. There's a whole new day changing all these characters and it's everybody's standing on edge. So you're going to see a bunch of new characters, some old characters. So again, a, ni a nice introduction to this. And Spider-Man just got an invitation to join, working alongside some of our favorite faces from the MU and a whole bunch of awesome new gadgets. And with Iron Man keeping an eye on them, surely everything is going to be great for the heroes, right? Come on. Of course not. Why would it be great? Then you wouldn't want to read the comic book. Uh, true, uh, true believers and uh, face front true believers and treat yourself to the first issue in the adventure of the Worldwide Engineering Brigade. So we're getting Spider-Man getting a little techie here. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, what do we got up? Eric's picking some good ones. Now, this one I am not familiar with at all. Now, this looks pretty cool. Now, this is uh, uh, where's my article there? There it is. It looks like Ash. It does look like a well. You might be correct on that. Uh, dynamite. And when a D-I-E explanation lives, and this is from Dynamite Entertainment. How ironic. The hit series returns. Oh, it's a returning series. Because you can't kill a never-ending army of zombies. So you are correct. Your only hope is to beat the shit out of them. <laughs> After tragically losing their first chosen one against the zombie plague, Vampirella, uh, Miss Fury and and what remains of the project superpowers look for a new savior, but Ash Williams dun, 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 is even <laughs> more, more reluctant deadite hunter than usual. This time, the army of darkness has ray guns, superpowers, and a brilliant new general, evil evil Sonia, who takes Ooh. the role of queen of hell quite seriously. So that looks pretty cool. That that's something I would get into. I love Ash. I yeah, love me the, too. Loved Ash. I loved his uh, his TV series too. That went uh, pretty well. And me last too. up. Last pick. Now, this is the full cover of the book. I'm just, I don't know why it looks like that, but anyway, uh, this is, um, this is six sidekicks of Trigger Keaton. <laughs> Let me try that again. Six sidekicks of Trigger Keaton from I'm Image sold Comics. just by the title. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is from Image Comics. For fans of Chew and Assassination comes a new action mystery series from Iser Award winning nominee Chris Wetcher and Kyle Starks. Now, the world's most unlikable action star has been found dead, and his previous TV sidekicks are looking to solve the mystery. Oh, I'm sold. <laughs> You're right. But you yeah. can, how can you catch a murderer when almost everyone hated the victim? Dun, 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 dun. Now these sidekicks are going to learn what it means to be the stars of the show. That is, if any of them survive the stuntman war. Oh, that looks pretty. That looks pretty fun too. You know, like it's it. funny. Yeah, the stuntman war. You know, it's funny. I've been revisiting on YouTube the Fall Guy. Oh yeah, Lee Major. Yeah, I, I, I even, even I add it. Now we all know you. You know, every Jamie knows. My wife, God help her, knows what my playlist is. I added the theme song to my playlist and I'm not the kind to kiss and tell, but I've been seen with Farrah. I've never been with anyone less than nine. So fine. I've been on fire for Sally Field, blown up for Raquel Welch. And I've been watching The Fall Guy nonstop, Wednesday nights, 9 o'clock, NBC. And now this book comes out, I think I'm going to have to, when I go down to Eric, Eric, put a book on the side for me. I'm picking it up. Dude, so, Stuntman you, Wars. Yeah, definitely. You, we can get these five and many more at the two locations. Uh, you want to give them the addresses there, Lewis, because it is the home of the Angry Geeks. Yes, it is. Actually, the home store of the Angry Geeks is 398 Bridgeport Avenue in Milford, Connecticut. Or you can go to the alternate store, the alternate home, which is in New Haven, 181 Chapel Street, New Haven, Connecticut. Call, ask for Eric, tell him that the Angry Geeks sent you, tell him you heard all about it right here on the Earplug Podcast Network. Sure, yes, sir. And thank you again, Eric. And Eric, if you're listening, because I know sometimes you do, you better get your butt up here. Come on. Got to get you in the studio. Yeah, we just talked about it, boss. We got to. 
All right. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for joining us on the Friday night edition. We hope you had a wonderful time with us. I hope you, the rest of your night goes well and you have a great weekend. Uh, Lewis, anything last, uh, any last words before we go? Stay classy, San Diego. All right. <laughs> Peace out. Have a great weekend, everybody. This has been an Earplug Podcast presentation found on EarplugPodcast.com, iTunes, SoundCloud, and wherever your favorite podcasts are found.